What is happening? I am here to talk about WWE, better known as World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, we have seen Raw, we have seen SmackDown, we've seen NXT, we've seen a lot of things happening. But the one of the most important storylines that's been happening is the WWE bloodline. Uh, you've got, at the start, you know, a couple of years ago, you had Roman Reigns and Jey Uso, then obviously Jimmy got added to it. Then after that, you had even Solo Sokoa, then Sami Zayn, and then obviously that exploded to WrestleMania with one of the biggest tag matches in WrestleMania history when the Usos took on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championships. Then you go from there, you obviously you had Cody Rhodes finishing the story against Roman Reigns, and then from there, a uh, Solo Sokoa interfered, and then Roman Reigns retained the title. Then fast forward one year later, a uh, Jey Uso was on his own. He was shooting with Jimmy Uso. You had a uh, Roman Reigns and The Rock, the final boss, competing against the uh, Cody Rhodes and the uh, Seth freaking Rollins. It culminated to WrestleMania Forty, where Roman Reigns lost the WWE Undisputed Championship to Cody Rhodes, finishing the story. Thus making it such a difficult scenario because now you've got in a situation where six months passed from WrestleMania and it's still the bloodline. It's still Roman Reigns as the number one superstar in WWE. And to be fair, that's definitely not a bad thing because the reality is when the storyline is that big, then what do you do with Cody Rhodes after finishing the story? Obviously it went from AJ Styles, then Logan Paul, back to AJ Styles. And then he obviously went from there to the Bloodline Stone away Solo Sokoa, then obviously the tag match with a uh, Roman Reigns against Solo and Jacob Fatu. And a side note, Jacob Fatu is absolutely phenomenal. But then it's where do you go with Cody Rhodes? But then that's for another day for another. So we're talking about the Bloodline. Uh, what I'm liking at the moment is the fact that Roman Reigns is still sticking to the origins of the character, but being a babyface at the exact same time. And a lot of people are chanting OTC and it's been actually tremendous to see that after 10 long years, Roman Reigns is finally accepted as a the number one babyface because let's face it, he is the number one babyface at the moment. But where do you go from here? Because you've got war games coming up, so I genuinely think, and this is Sunday, so it is the day before uh, Monday Night Raw where Jey Uso defends the Intercontinental Championship against Braun Breaker, that there's a possibility that the Bloodline's going to appear on Raw and screw JSO out of the Intercontinental Championship. Thus, then, wanting JSO to get revenge, and then obviously we'll tie him with Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso. But the dark horse of it all, Sami Zayn. Now, I'm liking the fact that Kevin Owens took exception in the fact that Cody Rhodes teamed up with Roman Reigns, and he was angry, and he was bitter by it. I love that. But what happens if Sami Zayn teams up with Roman Reigns? Does that set Kevin Owens over the edge? Does it? Who knows? But that's for another day for another story. We're talking about the bloodline and we're talking about what's possible is going to happen at war games where you've got the bloodline 2.0 which is the original bloodline. Am I looking forward to seeing that? Of course I am. But then it begs the question what happens to Roman Reigns after war games because the reality is Roman Reigns is not he's not away from the main event picture. Absolutely not. Not by a long shot. My oh, what I'd love to see is Cody Rhodes wrestling someone else at WrestleMania 41. I'd like to see the match that was, should have happened two years ago. Then the match that shouldn't have happened last year, which I'm glad it didn't because it should have been Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns by a shadow of a doubt. But you want to see the final boss versus the Tribal Chief. That's the match that people want to see. Will it be a great match? Who knows? But if you can tell it in such a way that people are captivated even before the match starts then sometimes it's like that Hogan Rock situation where the match could not be great. But you know what? Does it matter? you got to see the dream match. Now, the final boss and the Tribal Chief is a huge match going into WrestleMania 41. It has to be the match. Like I say, I'd love to see, would I love to see Cody compete in the triple threat? I would, I would in another day, but I think it needs to be Cody Rhodes versus a Randy Orton versus a Jacob Fatu versus a Gunter. It's such something. Keep Cody Rhodes away from... This match. So you're going into war games and you've got, obviously, Roman Reigns and you've got uh, Sami Zayn and the Usos versus Jacob Fatu, the Tongas, Brothers, and obviously Solo Sokoa, Tribal Chief. Uh, so the Bloodline has definitely dominated the last pff, four years of WWE. I'd like to see it come at an end, come WrestleMania 41, no? I think it's good to see Jey Uso be on his own. What does Roman Reigns go from there? I have no idea, but you think... This is it. This is the culmination of the Bloodline storyline. 
this is it. Uh, I think Roman Reigns should still go on with his Tribal Chief uh, gimmick. I love that. Uh, Jimmy also, if he wants a time with Roman, that's great. But uh, that's where I think the combination needs to be. It needs to be at WrestleMania for a moment. Finally, it all ends. Bloodline stolen, and then you go from there. Because if you remember when NWO, the, the reincarnations, 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 and it got to a point where people were like, oh my lord. Even when they come to the WWE in 2002, it wasn't as as impactful as it should have been. Don't get me wrong, Hulk Hogan was pff, huge when he came back. It, huge! And, you know, and it was more so. We don't want the NWO Hulk Hogan. We want the immortal Hulk Hogan. You know, what you're going to do, brother? So, you know... Where do you go from here going into WrestleMania 41 and after that? Because obviously I think he, as a book in the show more or less is like what do you do from there? And for me, I've always says that uh, from WrestleMania 41, where do you want your destination to be WrestleMania 40, 42? And don't get me wrong, the the reality is is that uh, it could change, it could pivot, it could be like oh this guy's getting over or this guy's getting over. But at the moment, WWE, don't get me wrong, it's its hottest period. And I've been watching WWE since 1989 when it was with the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah. And uh, 1989, believe it or not. Uh, and to see where it is now, it reminds me back to the actual era. It reminds me to when I first started watching the boom period. Because the boom period here for the United Kingdom wasn't the early 80s. It was the late 80s going into the early 90s. That was the boom period for the UK. And obviously when... Uh, the actual there, we all shared it. Don't get me wrong, it was annoying when you had to wait like Friday to watch Raw and Sky. Eh, but again, that was just how it is. But as we lead into WrestleMania 41, it needs to be that Roman and Rock is the match. Now, do I see Rock get involved in war games? Possibly. But to go from Solo and Roman to S Roman and The Rock... The original bowler needs to win. It needs to win. And then the final boss comes back and, you know, it's like, I'm the one that's going to defeat the tribal chief. You don't need an undisputed title for that match. That's huge. So in closing, uh, i got to do more of these because I, I, I like talking about wrestling and I talk about various subjects. Uh, so as I watched Smackdown on uh, Friday there, uh, Friday, well, Saturday morning because like it's like 1am on Saturday <laughs> here. But... Uh, there's a common theme at the moment, and I like it, is that Roman needs help. Jimmy needs help. You know, they can't compete against the four. Uh, so this is where you implement the PCs going into war games, and that's do the bloodline 2.0, screw JSO at the Intercontinental Championship against a Braun Breaker. Do you, and then do you add that in? And then how do you add Sami Zayn into that? I'm not really sure, because I think if Sami Zayn had a title or had a, a, a massive storyline that they could have impacted and fair enough. So I don't know how you how you add Sami Zayn and get that impact uh, unless, you know, uh, they did a beat down in jail or something and Sami Zayn makes a save. So it's one of those things, how do you get Sami Zayn added and to make it sense? But like I said, in closing, I'm looking forward to what they do with the bloodline. Uh, I think like it needs to culminate at WrestleMania 41 where it ends and then it goes from there and then you can start fresh with brand new things. Uh, so yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, like I said, WWE is thriving. So Netflix in January, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, you know what? It saves me 10 bucks when I've got WWE Network as well, even though I'm going to miss a damn thing. But I also save 10 bucks. So uh, yeah, so on that note, Enjoy your Sunday, Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more about that. So let's see what happens going on to that show. Uh, so yeah, let's do this. Bloodline tomorrow or next time I do this, we can talk about Cody Rose and then see what we, we do with him. And you know, it's fantasy booking. That's what I love about WWE. It's all about fantasy booking. It is. Anyway, have a good day. And you know what? Acknowledge your tribal chief, not me. Well, you can call me tribal chief if you want. But on that note, see you later.